Good evening. If you feel like you've been trying to drink from a fire hose when it comes to the news lately, you're not alone. Even professionals like New York Times chief White House correspondent uh, Peter Baker are feeling it. Quoting now from his tweet this afternoon, just a day in the Trump White House. Reagan treaty terminated, spy chief nominee pulled, North Korea given pass for illegal missile launches, rapper freed in Sweden, Trump signs deficit raising spending bill, top state official fired, and it's not even 3 p.m. yet. We begin tonight keeping them honest with one of those items, another presidential nominee for a very important job being pulled from consideration. This time it was Texas Congressman John Ratcliffe, nominee for Director of National Intelligence. And as you might expect, the ax fell on Twitter, which is, I guess, fitting because that's also where President Trump named him as his pick. Quoting the president now, our great Republican Congressman John Ratcliffe is being treated very unfairly by the lamestream media. Rather than going through months of slander and libel, I explained to John how miserable it would be for him and his family to deal with these people. John has therefore decided to stay in Congress, where he's done such an outstanding job representing the people of Texas and our country. I will be announcing my nomination for DNI shortly. So, just to be clear, the president wants you to believe that his nominee is fantastic, great, perfect candidate, perfect for the job, totally qualified. It's just those awful mean reporters are going to be tough on him and you know, they're going to slander and libel him. And he repeated that argument on his way to his country club in New Jersey. I felt that Congressman Ratcliffe was being treated very unfairly. I was reading the press, and I think I am a student of the press. And I could see that the press was treating him, I thought, very unfairly. He's an outstanding man. And I asked him, I said, do you want to go through this for two or three months, or would you want me to maybe do something else. And he thought about it. I said, it's going to be rough. I could see exactly where the press is going. And uh, fake news. He's a fine, he's a fine man. He's a fine man. And so uh, we hadn't started the process and I thought it's easier before we start. But I read things that were just unfair. And he's, he's just too good. He doesn't deserve it. He's just making it up as he goes along. And then when he pauses, he, then he's like, he just throws in the fake news because he needed a second to think about what else to say. It's the old blame the media game. This is like the oldest, lamest game in the book. It, the guy's just too good. He's so good, he can't stand up to reporters, you know, looking into his actual background and actual claims he's made, which, okay, seem to be false. By the way, CNN sources who've spoken with the president say he has, in recent days, actually privately voiced concern about Congressman Ratcliffe's confirmability. The congressman has very limited experience in the intelligence field. That was well known. Just six months, in fact, on the House Intelligence Committee. Has no experience whatsoever at any of the agencies that he would be uh, overseeing. He did serve 14 months as a U.S. attorney back in Texas. But what may have been an even bigger factor in the pullback are, as we mentioned, Serious doubts surrounding claims the congressman himself has made about his own past. He says he put terrorists in prison. A CNN search of terror-related cases fails to show any that the congressman himself actually prosecuted. Obviously, one then goes to his office and says, okay, can you give us some examples? His office, when asked, failed to offer any examples or any evidence. He also claims on his congressional biography, and you can see it there, that he, quote, arrested 300 illegal aliens, his words, in a single day. In fact, what he's referring to, but doesn't mention he's referring to, is a multi-state operation, not the work of some lone U.S. attorney out there in the border arresting folks, a multi-state operation that resulted in just 45 undocumented workers being charged by his office, six of whom had their cases dismissed. Quoting now from a recent Washington Post investigation, quote, a spokeswoman in ICE's El Paso office who also participated in the operation questioned Radcliffe's characterization of his role in the arrests. Quoting that spokesperson from ICE, no, that doesn't sound factual. That sounds incorrect, she told the Washington Post. In fact, she said she doesn't even remember the congressman saying, quote, the name doesn't ring a bell. Clearly, fine man, as the president describes him or not, this was a nominee with problems for one of the most important jobs to the safety and security of the country. What's more, they were all knowable problems, the kind that usually just come out during a thorough vetting that a position like this demands. You vet the candidate. According to Senator Jim Acosta, that is precisely what Congressman Radcliffe did not get, a thorough vetting, a source telling him that, quote, 
some kind of vetting, unquote, was done when he was previously considered for attorney general, but not enough. The president was asked about vetting today on the South Lawn, and you got to listen to his answer. I mean, as you listen to it, just think about the president's prior remarks about how unfair he thinks the press is for investigating this and revealing those unsettling facts about his now former nominee. Well, no, you vet for me. I like when you vet. No, no, you vet. I think the White House is a great vetting process. Uh, you vet for me. When I give a name, I give it out to the press, and you vet for me. You, a lot of times you do a very good job, not always. I think the, vet, the White, uh, if you look at it, I mean, if you take a look at it, the vetting process for the White House is very good, but you're part of the vetting process, you know? I give out a name to the press and they vet for me. We save a lot of money that way. And there it is. There it is, folks. One minute, reporters are fake news, unfair, libelous, slandering, just a, a darn good man. The next, we're a very good part of the White House vetting process. In fact, saving the country money. They don't have to do their jobs vetting. We do it. We are now so through the looking glass, ladies and gentlemen. It's amazing because without even realizing it, if the president is given the chance to speak long enough, he often lets slip how he really thinks about stuff, and he reveals that what he has just said previously, sometimes just seconds before, is just complete BS. And I know it's not like many of you don't already know this, but there are just so many examples of him saying one thing over and over again that are then revealed to be just wishful thinking or just made up. Remember the whole best people pledge? We're gonna make America great again. We're gonna use our best people. I'm gonna get the best people. We're gonna deliver. We're gonna get the best people in the world. We don't want people that are B-level, C-level, D-level. We have to get our absolute best. We're gonna use our smartest and our best. We're not using political hacks anymore. It's a sophisticated chess match, but I have the best people lined up. You need people that are truly, truly capable. We have to get the best people. The best people, folks who don't lie about their resume and stuff like that. Uh, Patrick Shanahan might have been the defense secretary. Two failed picks for the Federal Reserve, Stephen Moore and Herman Cain. Heather Nauert, named and then unnamed for UN ambassador, Dr. Ronnie Jackson, the would-be VA secretary who went down in flames. Labor secretary pick, Andy uh, Puzder. Two would-be ICE directors, two picks for Secretary of the Army. The list, as you see, goes on and on. There's so many people who are just in acting roles uh, because they don't actually have full-time people who have actually been confirmed. Which is not to say that, that prior administrations haven't had vetting failures and failed nominations before. They certainly have, but not even close to this many. What has never happened before, what is new, unprecedented in the case of top national security officials, frankly dangerous, is for a president to pay so little attention to vetting his nominee at all or try to toss it all off with a flip remark. You're part of the vetting process, you know? I give out a name to the press and they vet for me. We save a lot of money that way. Well, you're welcome.